Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in the module Reason and Persuasion. What's the module about? Well, this is the International Space Station. It's very expensive. What's it for? Well, they do scientific experiments on it. But um, it's not obvious why you need people in space to do scientific experiments. Cybernetics are so good now that you can create whatever experiment you like, um, roboticize it, cyberneticize it, and then run it in space um, without the expense and danger of sending humans up there to look after it. Well, um, maybe it's something to do with uh science on humans in space well we already know a lot about um the effects of of weightlessness on humans i mean throughout the um 70s there were astronauts and cosmonauts floating about be having their health measured well if it isn't obvious what it's for then how was it built i'll tell you it was built because um, there was a meeting. There was a meeting with the then president of the United States, who was Ronald Reagan, and the um, person who signs off the federal budget, whose name I don't know, um, but who was who had um, figures, who had figures and graphs and facts and arguments about why anybody would need an International Space Station. And then there were the guys from NASA. And the guys from NASA had little models and they said, well, well, Mr. President, the first bit we'll build is this, but then we'll build this other bit and these two bits will, will fit together like that. And they were able to offer a picture of human endeavor of of pioneering new frontiers which was a bit like um, people traveling west in covered wagons um, only up uh, and so a budget was agreed and uh, nasa went away with that budget and spent all of it on plans blueprints feasibility studies um, planning generally and they came back and said well we now know we can do it but we'll need more money and so they got more money and the cost ballooned and the thing was eventually built um why do i tell this story well it illustrates that um even institutions that um, are used to making very big decisions and make them very carefully are ultimately made up of human beings. And human beings make decisions on human grounds, in human ways. And ultimately, um, we try and make those decisions by attending to facts and, and, and logic and reasoning and arguments. But ultimately, um, we're susceptible to stories and to something visual and to something inspiring and the NASA guys had all that, um, and so they won, right? Um, still in the States, if you think about the decision to um, burgle the Watergate building, right? Now this, this was a mad decision. Uh, it was pretty much doomed to be discovered, and the political consequences, it was obvious that the political consequences would be horrendous. But they did it anyway. Why? Well, because the person who proposed it came to the meeting with lots of plans um, to do even more spectacularly um, illegal and, and you know, uh, harebrained things to try and win the next election for the Republican Party. Now, the guy who was making these proposals was an old mate. He was someone that everyone in the room had campaigned with. He'd been in the trenches with them. Um, 
<clears throat> he was someone that they, they, they couldn't easily say no to. So they turned down all his really big expensive mad ideas until just the last one of breaking into the Democratic um, National Headquarters in the Watergate building. That was the only one left. And it was the smallest and cheapest one. And there was a feeling that, you know, we can't send him away with nothing, you know, because this is our old, our old mate that we'd been through so much with. So they gave it to him. They said, yeah, yeah okay, you can, you can, you can do that one. And, and so they did um, with the well-known disastrous consequences that ended up with the then president, Richard Nixon, having to resign. Another terrible decision and foreseeably terrible decision. Why was it taken, even though everybody in the room was, you know, intelligent, experienced, had available, had all the facts available? Why? Well, because something to do with human relationships. So um, what is this module about? It's about the fact that we try to reason, we try to be rational, but um, our kind of animal humanity keeps keeps breaking through. That's that's essentially what it's about. Um, and this has three aspects, as far as as far as we're concerned. We're going to study uh, informal logic and and critical thinking. Right, that's the first thing. So that's um, that's the idea that you can study arguments and you can you can know by studying them which are better and worse arguments because arguments um, arguments have common features and we can we can make judgments we can have a bit of a theory about which arguments are better than others and we can know that on on fairly sound theoretical grounds um, and, and we can do that for um, purely formal arguments but we can also do it for arguments that are informal and I'll explain in a later lecture exactly what that def distinction is between formal and informal arguments. Now, textbooks on logic, both formal and informal, sell themselves on the idea that if you understand for logic, formal or informal, you can protect yourself against bad arguments and especially against bad arguments from people who want your money or your vote or your data, who want something from you and will try and bamboozle and hoodwink you into giving you giving them whatever it is they want. Um, and there's something in that. You can protect yourself from being bamboozled and hoodwinked insofar as the people who are trying to bamboozle and hoodwink you are bothering to address you with arguments at all. Um, more often, the more expert bamboozlers and hoodwinkers will not aim for you as a, as a rational deliberator, as someone who thinks about arguments. They will come at you and they will try and bamboozle you and hoodwink you, appealing to your emotions and your, um, your intuitions and the, 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 your, your fears and your hopes and your weaknesses and your human frailties. Um, and this is why we have to study a bit of psychology. We won't be doing we won't be doing any formal logic, by the way. Um, we will distinguish it from informal logic, but um, we won't actually study it. And we won't be doing a lot of psychology. We will do, we will do a bit of psychology. We will look at um, the heuristics and biases um, literature. And just to give you a flavour of that, um, one thing human beings respond to is reasonableness. So if you give a reason, it's hard to resist. So there was an experiment um, back in the days when officers had photocopiers, when um, bureaucracies ran on paper rather than on electronic um, documents. Uh, people spent a long time photocopying. You'd spend time queuing for the photocopier. Um, so there's a queue for the photocopier. And in the experiment, somebody would come along and say, um, I could I go to the front, please? Um, I have to make copies for the for the boss in the meeting, and then the meeting is in two minutes. It will say, okay, well, if it's for the boss and if it's in two minutes, you can cut in. That's okay. Um, 
next version of the experiment, um, I'm in a hurry. I, I, I need to make copy one sheet five times, five copies of one sheet, and I need it in two minutes. People say, well, it's a bit of a cheek, but yeah, okay. The amazing thing is if somebody comes up to a line at, waiting in a photocopier and says, um, excuse me, do you mind if I go to the front? I have to make copies. People let them in, right? Now think about it, that's mad because I have to make copies. Everybody has to make copies. They're standing in the line for the photocopier. It's a terrible reason for why somebody should go ahead of everybody else, but it's a reason. And just because it fills the space where a reason ought to go, it feels kind of reasonable and people respond to it. They may be also slightly shocked um, by the, uh, uh, the barefaced cheek of it. But anyway, um, that's the kind of animals we are. We respond to cues and I'll talk about that. But anyway, so that's part one was logic, formal, informal. The second aspect is the psychology of decision making. Um, and, and that's important because you need to know how your brain works um, because the people who want your money, your vote or your data, they know how your brain works. They've read this psychology. So you better know a little bit about it as well. The, um, the third uh, aspect is rhetoric. Right, so rhetoric is the art of persuasive speech. Rhetoric is the the whole art of matching um, the thing you say, the way you say it, the person you are, or the way you present yourself in saying it, um, so that these three things come together, and um, people find themselves being persuaded. Okay, so. And, and, uh, and the module is more or less divided. And we'll think about this in a modern context as well. So we'll think about rhetoric um, in things like politics and advertising and social media now. Um, there aren't that crisp decision, divisions between these three because part of the whole point is that we're going to move between them. We're also going to think a bit about... Um, Metaphysics, we're going to think about the metaphysical question of the relationship between um, human beings and everything else. So, we're, and the way we're going to think about that is by thinking about the relationship between the, the humanities, the humanities disciplines, so, you know, um, philosophy, literature, um, history, languages, possibly, depending on how you study them, um, some of the social sciences, and all of the other sciences. So that's our agenda. That's what the module is about. So um, there's a thing I want you to do now, which is I want you to, when you've finished, finished watching this video, I want you to find a piece of paper and I want you to write down on that piece of paper, I am committed to my studies. It doesn't matter whether you really believe it. It doesn't matter whether you really are committed to your studies. It's, this isn't about whether it's true. All you have to do is write it down. Write down that phrase, I am committed to my studies. And take that piece of paper and put it somewhere. Fold it into your wallet. Put it on your shelf of precious things. Give it to someone you trust and whose trust you, um, you would like to have right just store it somewhere and we'll come back to it i will i will uh talk about what we've done there okay so do that and then um come back to the next video we'll talk about the ancient greeks